A wonderful Savior is Jesus my Lord, a wonderful Savior to me. He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock, where rivers of pleasure I see. He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock, that shadows a dry thirsty land. He hideth my life in the depths of his love, and covers me there with his hand, and covers me there with his hand. A wonderful Savior is Jesus my Lord, he taketh my burden away. He holdeth me up and I shall not be moved, he giveth me strength as my day. He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock that shadows a dry thirsty land. He hideth my life in the depths of his love and covers me there with his hand and covers me there with his hand. With numberless blessings each moment he crowns, and fills with his fullness divine. I sing in my rapture, O oh, glory to God, for such a Redeemer as mine. He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock that shadows a dry thirsty land. He hideth my life in the depths of his love, and covers me there with his hand, and covers me there with his hand. Hello and welcome. Thank you for joining us here today. Thank you for coming back. Thank you for watching these videos. I know that that's something I say to you all the time, but I want you to know I really do appreciate you being here to worship your God and watching these and I want you to, to please, please, double check me. Go and look at your scriptures in your Bible, the ones that come up at the end of this video, and see if what you hear today isn't what your Bible says. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll have our same worship service that we always have. We'll have a couple of songs of praise. We'll have a song to get us ready for the Lord's Supper, and we'll partake of the Lord's Supper. Another song of praise, and then we'll have the lesson. Following the lesson, a final song of praise, and then we'll have my scriptures. Again, we'll scroll up at the end of this video, as always. You really need to be in your Bible, especially nowadays. You really need to see what God has said and what God is doing. God bless you for being here this morning. God bless you in that decision. To begin our worship service, would you bow with me, please? Father, today we, your children, have gathered here together, though far apart yet as one, to worship you, our God. We thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for this medium that allows us to do this. We ask, Father, that you bless this worship service and bless us as we do those things that we hope are pleasing to you, our God. Thank you, Father, for all you've done for us. Thank you for all your care. There's many on our hearts and in our minds, Father, that we know need your help. We ask that you reach down with your mighty hand, that you care for them as they have need and as you will. We ask also this morning, Father, for your forgiveness of our sins. We realize that we are very far below you, and that you, our God, can do all things. We ask, Father, that you be with us that you continue to show us your way. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Again, thank you for joining me here today. We'll begin a worship service now. Almighty fortress is our God, a bulwark never failing. Our helper, he amid the flood of mortal ills prevailing. For still our ancient foe Doth seek to work us woe His craft and power are gray And armed with cruel hay On earth is not 
his equal. Did we in our own stream confide our striving would be losing? Were not the right man on our side, the man of God's own choosing? Just as who that may be, Christ Jesus it is He. Lord Sabaoth His name, from age to age the same, and He must win the battle. And though this world with demons filled should threaten to undo us, we will not fear, for God hath willed His truth to triumph through us. The Prince of Darkness grim, we tremble not for Him. His rage we can endure, for lo, His doom is sure. One shall fail him. I don't know about tomorrow. I just live from day to day. I don't borrow from its sunshine. For its skies may turn to gray. I don't worry o'er the future, for I know what Jesus said, and today I'll walk beside him. For he knows what is ahead. Many things about tomorrow I don't seem to understand, but I know. step is getting brighter as the golden stairs I climb every burden's getting lighter every cloud is silver The sun is always shining, there no tear will dim the eye. At the ending of the rainbow, where the mountains touch the sky, Many things about tomorrow I don't seem to understand, but I know who holds tomorrow, and I know I don't know about tomorrow. It may bring me poverty, 
for the Lord's Supper this morning, I'll be reading to you from the first book of John, the fifth chapter, beginning at the sixth verse. This is he who came by water and blood, Christ Jesus, not only by water, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit who bears witness, because the Spirit is truth. For there are three that bear witness in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. And there are three that bear witness on earth, the Spirit, the water, and the blood, and these three agree as one. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater, for this is the witness of God, which he has testified of his Son. He who believes in the Son of God has a witness in himself. He who does not believe God has made him a liar, because he has not believed the testimony that God has given of his Son. And this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life. And this life is in his Son. He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son does not have life. I selected this reading for the simple reason that I wanted to center this that we're about to do on Jesus Christ, on his sacrifice, on the fact that without him we wouldn't have a chance. Jesus Christ came to this world, he lived, he preached, he died, and he raised again. And that sacrifice saved us from ourselves, saved us from sinful destruction. And he asked us to remember him. And that's what we're doing here today. We're remembering Jesus Christ and his sacrifice. He set forth two implements. He set forth bread and the fruit of the vine. The bread was the representation of his body. The fruit of the vine, the representation of his precious blood. 
He asked us to do it and he asked us to remember him when we did it. And that's what we're doing here today is remembering Jesus Christ. Pause this following the prayer and reflect on Jesus Christ. Take a few moments to think about the death that he suffered for you and me. What he went through to save us from ourselves. Would you bow with me now as I ask the blessing for the fruit of the vine and the bread. Father, at this time we your children come before your throne in thanksgiving. We thank you for this bread and this fruit of the vine, the representation of Christ's body and of his precious blood. We thank you for this opportunity and time to stop and remember Jesus Christ. We thank you for Jesus Christ and for the sacrifice that he made on our behalf to bring us back to you, our God. Thank you so much, Father, for these implements. Thank you for this opportunity to pause and remember Jesus Christ in this memorial. Please allow us to do this in a manner that pleases you, our God, as that is our whole desire. Thank you, Father, for this time and for these implements. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. I've a home prepared where the saints abide just over in the glory land. And I long to be by my Savior's side just over in the glory land. Just over, over in the glory land. I'll join, yes, join the happy angel band just over in the glory land. Just over, over in the glory land, there with, yes, with the mighty host I'll stand, just over in the glory land. I am on my way to those mansions fair, just over in the glory land, there to sing God's praise and His glory share, just over in the glory land. Just over, over in the glory land, I'll join, yes, join the happy angel band. Just over in the glory land, just over, over in the glory land, there with, yes, with the mighty host I'll stand, just over in the glory land. What a joyful thought that, my Lord, I'll see just over in the glory land. And with kindred say there forever be just over in the glory land. Just over, over in the glory land, I'll join, yes, join the happy angel band just over in the glory land. Just over, over in the glory land, there with, yes, with the mighty host I'll stand, just over in the glory land. With the blood-washed throng I will shout and sing, just over in the glory land. Glad hosannas to Christ the Lord and King, just over in the glory land. Just over, over in the glory land, I'll join, yes, join the happy angel band, just over in the glory land. Just over, over in the glory land, there with, yes, with the mighty host I'll stand, just over in the glory land. I know not by God's wondrous grace to me he hath made known, nor why unworthy Christ in love redeemed me for his own. But I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able 
To keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. We have much to read today, and we're going to be jumping around quite a bit. We're going to be in four places in the Old Testament and four places in the New Testament. So hold on. Here we go. Now it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, Here I am. And he said, Take now your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah, and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. So Abraham rose early in the morning and saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him, and Isaac his son. And he split the wood for the burnt offering and arose and went to the place which God had told him. Then on the third day Abraham lifted his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said to the young men, Stay here with the donkey. The lad and I will go yonder and worship, and we will come back to you. So Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and the two of them went together. But Isaac spoke to Abraham his father and said, My father, and he said, Here I am, my son. Then he said, Look, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide for himself a lamb for the burnt offering. So the two men went together. Then they came to the place of which God had told him, and Abraham built an altar there and placed the wood in order. And he bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. So he said, Here I am. And he said, Do not lay your hand on the lad or do anything to him. For now I know you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. And Abraham lifted his eyes and looked, and there behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by its horns. So Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up for a burnt offering instead of his son. And Abraham called the name of the place the Lord will provide, as it is said to this day, In the mount of the Lord it shall be provided. Then over to the book of Second Chronicles. And over there we're going to be in the 34th chapter. And we'll begin reading at the 8th verse of that chapter. Second Chronicles 34, beginning at verse 8. In the eighteenth year of his reign, when he had purged the land and the temple, he had Shaphan the son of Azaliah, Messiah the governor of the city, and Josiah the son of Johaz, the recorder, to repair the house of the Lord his God. When they came to Hilkai the high priest, they delivered the money that was brought into the house of God, which the Levites had kept in the doors and gathered from the land of Manasseh and Ephraim and all the remnant of Israel from all Judah and Benjamin, which they had brought back to Jerusalem. Then they put it in the hand of the foreman who had the oversight of the house of the Lord, and they gave it to the workmen who worked in the house of the Lord to repair and restore the house. They gave it to the craftsmen and builders to buy hewn stone and timber for beams, and the floor of the house which the kings of Judah had destroyed. And the men did the work faithfully. Their overseers were Jehoth and Obadiah, the Levites of the sons of Merai and, the, and Zechariah and Meshulam and the sons of Koahites to supervise. Others of the Levites, all of whom were skillful with music, with instruments of music, were over the burden bearers and were overseers of all who did the work of any kind of any service. And some of the Levites were scribes, officers, and gatekeepers. Now when they brought out the money that was brought into the house of the Lord, Hilkiah the priest found the book of the law of the Lord given by Moses. Then Hilkiah answered and said to Shaphan the scribe, I have found the book of the law in the house of the Lord. And Hilkiah gave the book to Shaphan. Then over in Psalm, we're going to be reading the Psalms. In the Psalms, we'll be reading Psalm 31, a portion of that Psalm. beginning at verse 19. O oh, how great is your goodness, which you have laid up for those who fear you, which you have prepared for those who trust you. 
In the presence of the sons of men you shall hide them. In the secret place of your presence from the plots of man you shall keep them secretly in a pavilion from the strife of tongues. Blessed be the Lord, for he has shown his marvelous kindness in a strong city. For I said in my haste, I am cutting off from before your eyes. Nevertheless, you heard the voice of my supplications when I cried out to you. O oh, love the Lord, all you his saints, for the Lord preserves the faithful and fully repays the proud person. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart, all of you who hope in the Lord. Then, let's go back to Second Kings. And in Second Kings, we're going to begin in the fifth chapter of that book. Starting at verse 1. Now, Naaman, commander of the army of the king of Syria, was a great and honorable man in the eyes of his master, because by him the Lord had given victory to Syria. He was also a mighty man of valor, but a leper. And the Syrians had gone out on raids, and had brought back captive a young girl from the land of Israel. She waited on Naaman's wife. And she said to her mistress, If only my master were with the prophet who is in Samaria, for he would heal him of his leprosy. And Nahum went and told this to his master, saying, Thus and thus said the girl who is from the land of Israel. Then the king of Syria said, Go now, and I will send a letter to the king of Israel. So he departed and took with him ten talents of silver, six thousand shekels of gold, and ten changes of clothing. Then he brought the letter to the king of Israel, which said, Now be advised when this letter comes to you that I have sent. Nahum, my servant to you, that you may heal him of his leprosy. And it happened when the king of Israel read the letter that he tore his clothes and said, Am I God to kill and make alive that this man sends a man to me to heal him of his leprosy? Therefore please consider and see how, the, how he seeks a quarrel with me. And it was when Elisha the man of God heard the king of Israel had torn his clothes that he sent to the king, saying, Why have you torn your clothes? Please let him come to me and... He shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. Then Nahum went with his horses and chariot, and he stood at the door of Elisha's house. And Elisha sent a messenger to him, saying, Go and wash in the Jordan seven times, and your flesh shall be restored to you, and you shall be clean. Then Naaman, furious, went away and said, Indeed, I said to myself, He will surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God, and wave his hand over the place and heal the leprosy. Are not the Abana and the Farpar, the rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? Could I not have washed in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in a rage. And his servants came near and spoke to him and said, My father, if the prophet had told you to do something great, would you not have done it? How much more then when he says to you, Wash and be clean? So he went down and dipped seven times in the Jordan. According to the saying of the man of God, and his flesh was restored like the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. And he returned to the man of God, he and all his aides, and came and stood before him, and he said, Indeed now I know that there is no God in all the earth except in Israel. Now therefore, please take a gift from your servant. But he said, As the Lord lives, before whom I stand, I will receive nothing. And he urged him to take it, but he refused. Then, over to the Gospels. Let's turn over to Matthew. And we're going to begin in that Gospel, in the 8th chapter, at verse 5. Now, when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him, pleading with him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home, paralyzed, dreadfully tormented. And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak a word, and my servant will be healed. For I also am a man under authority, having soldiers under me, and I say to this one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes, and to my servant, do this, and he does it. Then Jesus heard it. He marveled and said to those who followed, Assuredly, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, no, not even in Israel. And I say to you that many will come from east and west and sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the sons of the kingdom will be cast out into the darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then Jesus said to the centurion, Go your way, and as you have believed, so let it be done for you. 
and his servant was healed that same hour. Then the 14th chapter of that same gospel, and we're going to be in verse 22 and following. Immediately Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side, and he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. Now when everything came, he was alone there. I'm sorry, when evening came, he was alone there. But the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. Now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It's a ghost, and they cried out for fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, do not be afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me, come to you on the water. So he said, Come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, O you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. Then those who were in the boat came and worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Then over in the Gospel of Luke, I'm going to be there at the 19th chapter of that Gospel, beginning at verse 12. Therefore he said, A certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom to return. So he called ten of his servants, delivered to them ten minas, and said to them, Do business till I come. But his citizens hated him, and sent a delegation after him, saying, We will not have this man to reign over us. And so it was that when he returned, having received the kingdom, he then commanded these servants to whom he had given the money to be called to him, that he might know how much every man had gained by trading. Then came the first, saying, Master, your mina has earned ten minas. And he said to him, Well done, good servant. Because you were faithful and very little, have authority over ten cities. And the second came, saying, Master, your minna has earned five minas. Likewise he said to him, You also be over five cities. Then another came, saying, Master, here is your minna, which I have kept put away in a handkerchief. For I feared you, because you are an astire man. You collect what you did not deposit, and you reap what you did not sow. And he said to him, Out of your own mouth I will judge you, you wicked servant. You knew that I was an austere, austere man, collecting what I did not deposit and reaping what I did not sow. Why then did you not put my money in the bank, that at my coming I might have collected it with interest? And he said to those who stood by, Take the mina from him and give it to him who has ten. But they said to him, Master, he has ten minas. For I say to you, that to everyone who has will be given, and from him who does not have, even what he has will be taken from him. But bring here those enemies of mine who did not want me to reign over them, and I will slay them before me. Then the book of Hebrews. And in that book we're going to be in the 11th chapter. And I'll begin reading there at verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good testimony. By faith we understand that the works, that the worlds, were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of the things which are visible. Verse 6. But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Verse 8. By faith Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out of the place which he would receive as an inheritance, and he went out not knowing where he was going. Then verse 30. By faith the walls of Jericho fell down after they were encircled for seven days. By faith the harlot Rahib did not perish with those who did not believe when she had received the spies with peace. And what more shall I say, for the time would fail me to tell of Gideon, and Barak, and Samson, and Jephthiah, 
also of David and Samuel and the prophets, who, through faith, subdued kingdoms, worked righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword out of weakness, they were made strong because became valiant in battle, turned to the flight, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead, raised to life again. Others were tortured and not accepting deliverance that they might obtain a better resurrection. Still others had trial of mockings and scourgings, yes, and of chains and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn in two, were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, and tormented, of whom the world is not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains and dens and caves of the earth. And all these, having attained the good testimony through faith, did not receive the promise, God having provided something better for us, that they should not be made perfect apart from us. Then turn over to James, finally, in the second chapter, beginning at verse 14. What does it profit, my brethren, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you says to them, Depart in peace, be warmed and filled, but you do not give them the things that they have need and needed for the body, what does it profit? Thus also faith by itself does not have faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. But if someone will say, You have faith and I have works, show me your faith without your works, and I will show you my faith by my works. You believe there is one God, you do well. Even the demons believe, and they tremble. But do you want to know, O foolish man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered Isaac his son on the altar? Do you see that faith was working together with his works? And by works faith was made perfect. And the scripture was fulfilled which says, Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. You see then that a man is justified by works and not only by faith. Likewise was not Rahab the harlot also justified by works when she received the messengers and sent them out another way. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Okay, big argument time. Everybody's going to tell you, oh no, oh no. All you need to do is believe. Just say the sinner's prayer and you're going to be okay. That's going to do it for you. You don't need works. Do, they do not see they do not see the irony in that statement they're telling you if you have faith do something the Bible tells you if you have faith do something what does the Bible say the Bible says he that believes and is baptized will be saved he that does not believe will be damned you have to do something what do you have to do obey the gospel faith is, as our word today says, doing something. Faith requires that you do something. You can't just say, okay, yeah, I believe, and go about your way. That's not how it works. The gospel was set down for us to believe and to obey. Go and study that word today. Imuna. Faith. It is incredible how the Word of God has been so twisted and so turned around. I, I don't understand. You know, the Word itself, faith, it means act with firmness. To have faith is to act. That action is an obedient action to your belief in Jesus Christ. And yet you have people that will tell you, oh no, all you have to do is say this prayer and then go dancing on your merry way and you're fine. That's not how it works. We've talked about that a lot. I've mentioned that a lot. And I want you to know, everybody that tells you that all you have to do is believe, you'll be alright. 
That's not true. James even tells us that's not true. Even the devils believe. And they believe so much that it scares them. They tremble. But they're not saved. They're not saved because they haven't obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's how you are saved. That's what salvation is all about. And today, especially today in this world, the way it is, salvation is necessary and needed for everyone that takes a breath. I want you to go back and reread all these scriptures about faithfulness. And what faithfulness was. Faithfulness was doing something. Being faithful was hearing what God said and doing what He said to do. Thank you for joining me here today. Thank you for being with me. Please go and reread these scriptures. Go and see if what you heard here today isn't exactly what your Bible says. God bless you all for being here. Would you bow with me one final time as we close out this service? Father, thank you for allowing us to be in your word today, to see the truth in your word. Thank you so much for being with us and blessing us with the truth. Allow us, Father, to go into this world and be bright and shining lights to all of those around us to show them what the Word of God is and what the truth of the Word of God is. Thank you, Father, for being with us. Thank you for your great blessings. Thank you for Jesus Christ. It's in His name that we pray. Amen. Again, thank you so much for joining me here today. God bless you all in that decision. Go out into that world and shine. You have a reason to shine. You belong to God. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bidst me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come, I come, just as I am and waiting not to my soul of one dark blot to thee whose blood can cleanse each spot O Lamb of God I come I come just as as I am, though tossed about with many a conflict, many a doubt, with fears within and falls without, O oh, Lamb of God, I come. I come just as I am poor wretched blind sight rich is healing of the mind yea all I need in thee to find Just as I am, thou wilt receive, wilt welcome, pardon, cleanse, relieve, because thy promise I believe, O Lamb of God, I come, I come, just as I am, thy love unknown has broken every barrier down, now to be thine Alone, O Lamb of God, I come.
Christ the Lord is risen today. Alleluia. Sons of men and angels say, Alleluia. Raise your joys and triumphs high. Alleluia. Sing ye hymns, thou earth reply. Alleluia. Love's redeeming work is done. Alleluia. Fought the fight, the battle won. Alleluia. Lo, our sun's eclipse is o'er. Alleluia. Lo, he sets in blood no more. 